It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for hanging out with me today for another song reaction and breakdown. Uh, it is a new week. It is a Monday. Happy Monday, everybody. And uh, if you've been following the channel for the last several weeks, you know what Mondays bring. We are going back to the band Iron Maiden for an Iron Maiden Monday. And the song today by Iron Maiden is Sign of the Cross. This will be my first time listening to this track. In fact, it'll be my first time listening to a track off one of the sort of middle career uh, albums from, from Iron Maiden. This song was released as the, uh, the first single, or the first, I should say the first track, on uh, The X Factor, which was the 10th studio album of Iron Maiden released in 1995. I was graduating from high school that year. Uh, this is the first of two albums to include Blaze Bailey as a uh, lead vocalist, while uh, Bruce Dickinson had left to pursue a, um, a solo career. And uh, when, I <laughs> when I announced yesterday on my little uh, live video uh, telling people what's coming up on the channel this week, and I mentioned, hey, I'm doing Sign of the Cross, uh, a discussion ensued. Uh, between the Iron Maiden fans uh, trying to claim which version of this song would be best for me to react to on the channel. There's the original studio version with Blaze on vocals. There's also the Rock in Rio live version from 2001 with Bruce uh, being back in the band and, uh, and singing it live in front of like a quarter of a million people. So uh, that's the one I'm going to do today. I'm going to do the Rock and Rio version. Not because I like one uh, singer over the other or anything else. The main reason is because whenever I can, I do like to include live performances and see uh, how the band uh, plays, offers their music in concert, how they interact with the crowd, what the vibe is uh, live. Uh, only in certain circumstances where I really, really want to see the intricacy of of a um, of an original studio recording where they had all the bells and whistles, you know, available to them. Um, when I do one of those, but uh, a lot for a lot of these, especially these big metal uh, pieces that are sort of, you know, they live in the studio versions and they're great, but they really do. They're built for these big uh, arena, these big outdoor shows where a whole bunch of people can participate and hear it. So uh, Sign of the Cross by Iron Maiden uh, from Rock and Rio. We're going to take a listen and see what the band uh, has for us today. Here we go. Sounds like Russian bass music, or Russian choral music. I say bass music because that's, a, that's where, I, where my brain goes. I love Russian choral music. Rachaninov, Rachmaninov, Chesnikov, all the Kovs. Really wonderful tradition. Does he have a low E? Sort of. Little military march there. They're doing their uh, their favorite chords. Good old E minor. So I'm listening to the bass. If you want to figure out what I'm doing, I'm listening to the quality of the chords and where the bass moves. Most often they're playing in root position. So if I can figure out when the chord changes and what the bass notes are doing, that gives me a lot of information as to what is going on. So that progression the bass was from the 6th scale of the way to the 7th to the back to the octave. And in this key, it's C to E to E. Let's see. 
chords and and provide some interesting motion for the band Uh, 
always interesting to me as well how each of the guitar solos from the individual players had their own unique sound. They all have their own unique sound. So you can always really tell if you're if you've got really astute hearing and you're you're following like what each guitar player's solos sound like, you can tell the difference between you can tell who's playing what. I'm not quite to the level where I can tell who is who yet. on E minor was a little bit um, weak. Yeah. He's got oh no. That's cool. I don't think I've ever heard uh, him uh, or any vocalist. Alright, there he goes. Okay, <laughs> they were going to be off into a new, a new piece. Wow, I don't think I've ever heard Bruce or or Blaze sing that low. Um, uh, I also saw some stuff online about whether this was like pro Christianity or Christianity bashing. I I'm not going to uh, make uh, too much of a. Um, of a lyrics play in this. I think they're pretty straightforward and there's a couple of different interpretations you could uh, you could make in this. Um, the, the the thing that I was saying at the end uh, where they, uh, they did that last little chorus, um, I'm looking at the lyrics, a sign of the cross, the name of the rose, a fire in the sky. Um, they slowed down right which was really cool i love the uh the difference of texture of of uh how fast the music goes the the tempo the meter all that sort of stuff and playing with that it gives uh some some variety to the piece but the way that they ended it uh it was like they were in g the relative major and they're like no we're in e minor and they just played that last chord it was a weak resolution as far as i'm concerned if you're going to go and change the uh, the tempo and the texture of the piece and end it like that uh i th i would have hoped they could have come up with a little more interesting way to approach that final arrival on the e chord how is it special and different from the rest of them right um i just a little compositional quirk that uh, that popped into my head as i heard it um as always, they they uh, they rock the crap out of all of those people. What is it about Brazil that makes uh, a whole bunch of people in that country just be rabid, rabid Iron Maiden fans? Um, is it different than other places around the world? It seems like they when they go to Brazil, they get these huge, huge um, uh, concerts uh, with with the massive amounts of people. Be curious just to see what the history is of how the band uh, grew that fan base in South America. 
Cool stuff. Well, I think that was a fun way to start off a Monday. Thanks y'all for being with me and we will see you next time for another edition of The Daily Doug.